from the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This is Carolina Week. Good evening and welcome to the October 13th edition of Carolina Week. I'm Amanda Yarusi. And I'm Amanda Eiler. Thanks for joining us. Candidates are battling it out in the race for homecoming king and queen in more ways than one. They're suiting up to not only go head to head on the campaign trail, but also on the sumo wrestling mat. Five worthy competitors duked it out in the pit on Monday. Candidates for queen include Aletha Green, Tracy Miller, and Rhonda Taylor. Both candidates for King, Clint Lloyd, and Kevin Bullock have specific service projects they want to push if elected. We want students to just start picking up after themselves. And it sounds like a really basic idea, but if everybody does, it can make a huge difference. My service project is entitled Read and Succeed 2004, and it's all focused on the problem of children's literacy in schools. So I'm trying to work with elementary kids and promote literacy. Students can vote starting Tuesday on Student Central. Winners will be announced at the game on Saturday. The long, tedious, and often bizarre process of expanding the Atlantic Coast Conference has come to an end. On Sunday, Boston College announced it had accepted an invitation from the conference, bringing the total number of ACC members to an even dozen. Here's what some of you are saying about expansion. Um, my first thought was now that the ACC will be a big football powerhouse and will rise above the SEC and all the other bigger conferences. How do you think this will change the way Carolina's stature is in the league? I mean, I, I, have, I can't answer that until we play them. That's, that's the best I can give you there. I just don't care. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, don't, I guess it would be the big deal. It's just one more school. Okay. I feel like it'll probably make us more competitive and more um, geared towards big money and um, big big games and things like that, but um, I'm a little concerned also about it taking away from like the rivalries. Sunday marked the 210th anniversary of the laying of the cornerstone of the first building at UNC Chapel Hill. Faculty, distinguished guests, and students gathered in Hill Hall to remember the founding principles upon which this university was built. The ceremony was led by Chancellor Meeser and included a presentation of three distinguished alumni awards. Dr. Mary Sue Coleman gave the University Day Address. She's a former Tar Heel and currently the president of the University of Michigan. University Day is held each year on October 12th. The ceremony often brings in widely known guests and sometimes serves as the convocation for new chancellors. Carolina students, make sure you have your UNC One cards for this year's basketball season. The Carolina Athletic Association has a new policy for ticket distribution. According to the new policy, students won't be able to get into basketball games with student tickets only. They'll also need a valid UNC One card. All students will be required to enter through Gate D, where a security team will be checking their one cards. CAA President Cheryl McMillan says the change will ensure that only UNC students use student tickets. It's not fun at all to tell your wife or your husband they can't go. It's not fun to tell your mom or your brother they can't go. But in the end, we want to ensure that the student tickets are used by students and only by students because our student fees pay for those tickets. The CAA wants to ensure that all 4,000 student tickets for each game are used by students wearing Carolina blue, not red and not royal blue. The CAA estimates the turnout at distribution will double this year, thanks mostly to the arrival of Coach Roy Williams. Dean Smith coached the Heels for 35 years and changed the face of basketball. But few know he was also a key figure in racial integration. Along with Reverend Bob Seymour, Coach Smith kicked off this year's Race Relations Week on Sunday evening. Students listened as the two old friends talked about the changes they've seen in Chapel Hill during the years, like the acceptance of black athletes. Coach Smith helped integrate athletics throughout the Southeast. My first job was to find a, a black uh, athlete, and uh, we did work hard at that. And, uh, 
I guess we were the first below abortion in D.C. and across the South. Students residing in the Birmingham Address, affirming commitment to the advancement of race relations, will be a part of this week's race relations events. Some people say the North American Free Trade Agreement is a good thing. Others disagree. Students, faculty, and many others attended a speech Friday designed to increase awareness about NAFTA. Labor organizer and former sweatshop worker Marco Antonio Torres discussed the impact of NAFTA in Mexico. Torres said that since the implementation of NAFTA in 1994, the average daily wage has decreased to $4 and the poverty level has grown from 36% to 60% of the population. An international event of its own took place in Chapel Hill this past weekend. The Persian Cultural Society brought the Middle East to the UNC campus. During the first ever Iranian film festival, students and the local community watched, questioned, and learned. The theme of the festival, The Day I Became a Woman, captured the role of women in Iranian society. Columbia University's Hamad Deboshi says Iranian cinema has an impact on all women. Iranian cinema has played a disproportionately important role in bringing global attention to the predicament of Iranian women, Muslim women, third world women, and women in general. Over 1,100 people attended the three-day festival. Due to its success, PCS hopes to have another film festival next year. Well, the film festival was definitely a great way to, you know, spend the weekend, watch some movies. Sorry I missed out on that. I was glued to my couch Saturday. It was a great weekend for college football. As you should have been. Let's go straight to our uh, sports trivia question for the week, which is UNC's Darian Durant, star quarterback. He says he models his game after this NFL quarterback. Is it Dante Culpepper of the Vikings, Kerry Collins of the Giants, Donovan McNabb of the Eagles, or Quincy Carter of the Cowboys? We'll have the answer to the sports qu trivia question and a look at this weekend's sports action when Carolina Week returns. Uh, I think you should wear a tie. Oh, Dad, nobody wears ties to school. Tie says you're serious. It'll make a good impression. And remember, you're there to study, to, study, to, to learn, learn, and to make something of myself. Got it. Almost half of all UNCF students are the first in their family to go to college. They have some great architecture classes. Dad, I'm not really interested in architecture. Well, keep your options open. And remember, no girls until you until my work, work is done. done. And I'd make sure that I got my Dad, lunch. Dad, Dad, you're not going. I am. I know. Well, listen, we better get going. Don't yeah. want to be late the first day in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when you're the first to go, you're going for a lot of people. The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome back to Carolina Week Sports. 0-5 is a joke to many football fans. But Saturday, the 0-5 Tar Heels and the 0-5 East Carolina Pirates played as passionately as undefeated teams would in Greenville. Wes Wilson has the story. Tensions were high this weekend, emotions wild, and Greenville was buzzing, all because of two winless football teams. It was a classic showdown between East Carolina's impotent offense and Carolina's woeful D. Both ranked last in the country. It was the Zero Bowl, the Toilet Bowl, as fans were calling it. But there was a touch of good news, a glass half full, if you will. Both of them haven't won yet, so somebody's got to win. Exactly. Somebody's got to win, one way or another, so it's cool either way. Yes, someone had to win, and Carolina staked a claim to that early on as Darian Durant hooked up with Mike Mason for a 34-yard touchdown. But like the XFL, the lead was short-lived. ECU bounced back and took a 10-7 lead into the break. After halftime, a Chad Scott fumble and some rumbling and bumbling. ECU safety Travis Heath tells Carolina Week, dog, you're on point. Thanks, Travis, but did you drop something? ECU had two touchdowns called back because of penalties and let Carolina back in the ball game. The 
the Carolina running game broke out against ECU for a season high 189 yards and all three backs looked solid as Carolina notched its first win of the season. And if getting that first win wasn't motivation enough, some of the Hills had a little extra incentive Saturday. So I committed here my junior year, but then I decided to go to Carolina when I went on a visit there. So, you know, they were kind of upset about that. And then I don't know if you heard, but the fans was in the stands giving me a lot of crap, you know, talking back and forth to me. But, you know, I just laughed at it and just kept playing. In Greenville, I'm Wes Wilson, Carolina Week Sports. The final score, UNC 28, ECU 17. Darian Durant threw for 198 yards with two touchdowns and no interceptions. The Heels play Arizona State this Saturday for homecoming. Even in the rain and mud, the North Carolina women's soccer team doesn't seem to slow down. Friday, Carolina looks to avenge last season's only loss against North Carolina State. The Tar Heels give plenty uh, they have plenty of opportunities, and they outshoot the Wolfpack 28 to 3. In the second half, the Heels make like the rain and pour it on. Jessica Maxwell scores her first career goal. It's 2 0 Carolina. Then, Casey White. Psych! There it is, it's going in. Heels win it 4 to 1. White says she's pleased with her performance. It felt great. It was, you know, the first game I've been able to do that in my career, so it was good, but I definitely owe it, you know, to my teammates. They put me in great positions to get the goals, but it's an awesome feeling to, especially to be able to get revenge on NC State from our loss last year. The women aren't the only ones playing well. The men's soccer team has improved to 10-1-2 after defeating Mercer and Kentucky this weekend at the UNC Greensboro Adidas Spartan Classic. On Friday, the third-ranked Heels shut down Mercer 5-0, each goal coming from a different player. And Sunday, Carolina midfielder Ray Fumo put in the game winner against Kentucky in the 75th minute. Carolina wins it 2-1. The team's next game is in Raleigh against the Wolfpack on Sunday at 2. Unless you're willing to take some bumps, stay off the wrestling mats in Fetzer Gym. Here's why. The Carolina wrestling team hit the mats to start gearing up for the upcoming season. Friday was the team's first chance to grapple with each other as it begins to defend last season's ACC championship. Five individual ACC champs are back, but there's a new look to this year's Tar Heels. New head coach, C.D. Mock, takes over the reins from longtime head coach Bill Lamb, who coached at Carolina for 30 years. First-year assistant coach Glenn Lanham has a theme for this year's team. You know, our theme this year is raising the bar, and, and, and that's what we're doing. I feel like the guys are responding well to that, and uh, they, they're, they're really working hard. They, they want to be All-Americans. They want to build on that uh, ACC championship, and they want to do uh, better in the, in the national tournament. And, I, and that's what I feel uh, the direction we're heading for. On Wednesday, we'll take a closer look at the new Carolina wrestling coaches. So back to this week's question. Which quarterback do you think Darian Durant models his play after? I am going to have to say Dante Culpepper because I like to watch him, so I'm going to guess him. He's been great this year, but actually it's Donovan McNabb. Ironic because if you guys remember, it was uh, ESPN where Rush Limbaugh, the talk show host, he had to resign from ESPN because of his controversial quarterbacks about Donovan McNabb. You know, I'm hoping one of these weeks I'm going to get one of these questions right, but it's not looking good so far. I would pick Quincy Carter being you know, a Dallas fan, but... Uh... But anyway, Chris, there were some other sporting events around this weekend that weren't football that uh, you seemed to miss you, out you on. You dropped the buck, Chris. It was a pie eating contest this afternoon in the pit. This is Stuart Anderson right here, chowing down with a face full of pie. He won $50. Oh, looks disgusting. Homecoming week festivities going on all week, culminating with the big game against Arizona State on Saturday. That's so right. We'll, we'll all be rooting for the Tar Heels for another win. <laughs> Let's hope that goes well. Definitely. Well, that is all from us here. We'll see you all on Wednesday. Thanks for watching. Good night.